This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the T-Mobile G2 made by HTC. This is T-Mobile's latest high-end or super phone if you want to call it that, Android phone. Not that it's higher end than the Vibrant, which we'll compare it to here size-wise. It's just newer and it has a keyboard. Unlike the Motorola Click XT, which is a distinctly mid-range phone, this guy is a high-end phone. You can see here it's got the full QWERTY keyboard. It's very large, very roomy. It's backlit. It has the secondary keys large here and masked actually in white rather than gray, which the primary keys are masked in. I find that twists my brain a little bit, but you will get used to it. You have three assignable keys here. You can assign them to launch any application that you want. And since it's HTC, they have a great on-screen keyboard. Take a look at the hinge on the device. It's not just a normal slider. It's got like a scissor hinge. If you can see the interesting kind of curve in there towards the center. And that's because the phone opens with scissors here. Not much has been made about the fact that it has a loose hinge. That design doesn't allow for a very tight fit. If you do try real hard and hold the top, it will drop some if you shake it you can get it to loosen up more. When the keyboard is deployed, I find it pretty hard to get the, the phone to do. I mean, if you shake it, you can get it to close. But anyway, it's not the world's tightest hinge, in other words, but in normal use, it's, it's not a problem or distracting. One thing to note that the phone is supposed to have four gigs of internal storage, and in fact, we'll take a look at ours, and you'll see it lists as having only 1.2 gigs of available storage. Very mysterious. That's the SD card up here. It comes with an 8 gig card pre-installed. And here, available storage is 1.19 gigs. It was 1.2, but I did download an application. So where the rest of that storage memory is, couldn't quite tell you. Hopefully T-Mobile and HTC will explain this at some point. The phone has an 800 megahertz Qualcomm MSM family CPU. That's an ARM 7 type CPU. It benchmarks faster than pretty much every phone in terms of CPU speed. And I'm talking a lot faster, like 900 versus 1600 on benchmarks. And experientially, it is very fast. Part of the reason it feels fast is because it runs Froyo. As you can see right here, you've got the Infinity style scrolling on the home page. And a bunch of other nice Froyo optimizations. That's the newest Android operating system, Froyo 2.2. And this is a very vanilla Google experience phone, I guess, to follow with continuity with G1, which was the first ever Android phone, and there were no customizations. That means there is no HTC Sense software on this phone. This is straight Froyo. So you've got just standard home screens that you get with Froyo right here, minus the HTC customizations. And this is a news and weather widget courtesy of Froyo and Google. That's a help one right there, a help widget. And if we go back here, you'll see the social networking. This is the standard Twitter widget and the standard Facebook. That's not third party. That's not something that HTC is providing. So if you want just straight vanilla Google, this is the phone for you. Beyond the 800 megahertz CPU and Froyo 2.2, this has a 5 megapixel camera with an autofocus lens and an LED flashback here, and it can shoot HD video. The phone is primarily made of pretty rugged plastic but we've got this aluminum back here and interesting the way it comes off there's a slide release right here it comes off like so sim card goes up here the micro SD card is unfortunately under the battery so if you want to swap that card out you are going to have to power down and we all know that Android is not the fastest to boot up fortunately this does work in USB mass storage mode if you just want to transfer stuff to and from the card power buttons up here that's your three and a half millimeter stereo jack. Again, that's the release for the back door. Microphone down here. This is the digital trackpad, which works just fine, similar to some other HTC phones we've seen running Android OS. Micro USB, your volume rockers, and this button over here launches the camera. And this is a pretty basic interface again, because this is a basic Google Experience phone, you can slide between video and still photos and access some settings here. Let's take a closer look at the keyboard here. You can see that the keyboard has somewhat raised keys. The travel feels pretty good on this. 
It's a very wide keyboard, so this is great for guys with big hands. Uh, if you're used to something like a Blackberry, though, you're probably going to find the travel a bit tedious at first. It's a long reach from the sides here. So ladies with small hands and even guys with small hands, I suggest you try it to see how you like it. You've got dual shift keys over here, and it's obviously a four-row keyboard, but the number row is embedded because the bottom row is using the assign application keys here and the shift keys. Up front here we have touch-sensitive buttons and you get haptic feedback when you press them. This is the standard Google launcher here for your web browser to get to all applications and to get to the phone. Let's take a look at the apps that are on here. Again, I put a few apps on, Benchmark Applications and File Manager and Telenav because it doesn't come with Telenav. It does come with Google Maps and Google Navigation. But you can see we have Google Earth here. We have Gmail, of course, email, the Amazon MP3 store, Google Finance, Google Sky Map, Google Translate, Google Search, which would be standard Google Goggles, Google Maps, Google Listen, Latitude, you name it. Everything that Google makes for Android is on this phone. And no, you can't delete them. But fortunately, most Google apps are pretty useful. The contacts and calendar experience are standard for Google. Again, they're not customized in any way. We'll take a look at the calendar. There's the standard calendar right there. My appointments are marked with colors in the month view. You can do week views and day views and so on, so if you want to see the day view, just tap on that given day, and you can create a new appointment right from here. Now we'll take a look at the dialer. That's your standard big button dialer, and you've got a quick links to your call log, all your contacts and your favorites. With Google, you can select contacts as favorites, and no matter which Google phone you're using, you'll pick those up. Contacts as usual. Standard Google experience, if you have pictures of folks, they'll show up over here. And if you want to see an individual contact, we'll open up one. And there's your individual contact. If there was a photo, it would show up, up there, and you can assign one as well. We'll take a look at the web browser. Since this is Froyo 2.2 with Flash, you can watch Flash content. So here we've just loaded our site, which loaded incredibly quickly. This is not a mobile site, so it's particularly interesting to know that it loads very quickly because this has HSPA+, Plus, which is T-Mobile's version of 4G. It's their first phone with 4G. So far, they've just had data sticks, and the maximum for that standard is 21 megs per second, and on phones, it is 14.4. So this is as fast as using Wi-Fi if you're in an HSPA+, Plus coverage area, and T-Mobile is rolling that aggressively. So you have your usual excellent Google web browser here, WebKit based, and you can pinch and zoom. You can see this phone is really, really fast. I mean, it's just very fluid with the zooming. And now we're going to take a look at a page that has a video review, so we can test out Flash Playback. And you can see a full HTML page loading with lots of pictures. That is nice and fast. And that's a very busy full HTML web page. And there is our video. Oh, the Motorola Charm Android phone on T-Mobile. And the volume on it is obviously a, pretty good. It has a pretty good speakerphone. Reception on the phone is is overall very, I mean, you can see right now we have full bars, but then it just jumped down to two. Overall, it seems to be fairly good and a bit better than the uh, Samsung Vibrant, which is not a great reception phone. But it does jump around a bit, too. And I've noticed that when it's particularly in landscape mode with the keyboard deployed, it sometimes switches to Edge once in a while and then switches right back to 3G. So we're going to have to test that more over the coming week and put that in our full review, the final verdict on reception here. One thing so far is we have had no problem with slow data speeds or anything like that, despite the slightly jumpy reception. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the usual Google Maps, which also has navigation component. You can see that loads very quickly. Again, this is downloading over T-Mobile's 4G network. 
pinch, zoom, very fast. And we'll see if we can get street view loading. Boy, that was fast, huh? Obviously the phone has a built-in accelerometer. You can also switch between landscape and portrait mode by using the keyboard, opening it and closing it. And there you've got street view. Most excellent. Of course, there's the usual Google YouTube player on board here, but with Flash 1.1 native here, I don't know how much time you're going to spend with the YouTube player. It is pretty quick, obviously, to play videos in the mobile format. We're just going to pick whatever's on the home screen so you can see that playing. Switch over to HQ. It's a 3.7 inch capacitive multi touch the screen. It's very sharp and very bright. I wouldn't say it's better than the Vibrant, so that's still the king of the crop for displays, but nonetheless, this is very nice. So that's a T-Mobile G2 made by HTC, available October 6th, or maybe a couple of days sooner. It's T-Mobile's highest and Android QWERTY phone, and it's a quite a good phone. We're going to put it through its paces and give you a full review, which you can read on our website, mobiletechreview.com.